Hey y'all, welcome or welcome back to my channel. Today, I am so excited to share with you this winter to spring transitional makeup video. We are coming into my time of the year where I like to play with my bright pinks and corals and just create really beautiful, really lively makeup that feels so at home to my soul and a new mascara product that does not want to stop smudging. To find out everything that we are talking about, get comfy and let's get into this fun makeup video. Let's get into creating our spring forward makeup look and I'm so excited because I have some new products. Before we get into putting any color on, let's do some skin prep. Skincare has been on for several hours and I've applied two applications of my Round Labs Birch Juice Moisturizing Sunscreen. Nothing new there. Everything's the name. It's just I really love this skin prep routine and my skin's felt really comfortable which is huge for my skin in a transitional period. Anything I can do to keep it consistent makes me very, very happy. To start with my skin prep, I want to add a little bit of moisture to the skin. I'm using my favorite MAC Fix Plus. Fix Plus is an interesting product because a lot of people use it after their makeup application as a setting spray. But when I first began working for MAC, this was more of a skin refreshing spray. Fix Plus is a glycerin based makeup mist and glycerin acts as humectant, so it will help draw moisture into the skin. I like to use it as a bridging step from your skin prep or priming routine into your makeup routine, just for a little extra bit of moisture so your skin will receive the makeup a little bit better. A milk Makeup Hydro Grip Primer. And I think for I found the perfect way to apply it. I end up using three little pumps and spread it around my face. When I first was using this product, I wasn't a huge fan and I found that I was trying to be too conservative with the amount I was trying to apply because I would take one prep and try to spread it around. And sometimes I felt like it would not be enough product and drag. So then I would more, I would pump it into my hand quite cavalier. So then I would just start pumping a few pumps in my hand and then I would get too much product and I would notice pilling. Then I began applying a little bit more in a dose dependent application. So that's where I came up with three pumps works really well for me. And I can spread those between the cheeks, forehead, and that will spread to the nose and the chin and onto the neck. And just like my skincare, I have really been into pressing into the skin. Esthetician side of me coming up because when we're doing skincare facial treatments, we're always incorporating some type of massage. A lot of times tapamont is a form of massage that we use where there's tapping or gentle slapping to the skin. I like to add in that because it adds just a little bit of vigor back to the skin and I love any type of energizing effect I can do to the skin. I like to give the Milk Makeup Hydro Grip just a moment to sink into the skin. I have been doing brows. My goodness, I got really nervous. I thought my brow pencil was empty, which that would be great because that means I'm using up more products. But oh my goodness, I don't have a brow pencil in hand at the moment. Sephora Collection Retractable Brow Pencil Waterproof. The shade I am using, one 0.25 neutral gray brown. Start by brushing my brows down. And this is a trick I picked up from a Lisa Eldridge video many, many years ago. And Lisa spoke about brushing the brows down, reveals the underlying structure of the brows. And then when you brush your brows back up into the more up and out position that we're accustomed to, it hides the pencil work a little bit more. So things just look a little bit more natural. And then you can go back in and finesse the shape in any way that you need to. And that has carried on with me for what the last 10 years of my makeup career. Over the years, I've had such a mixed relationship with my eyebrows. I used to try to shape them and make them thinner because I felt like they were too big. And then I wanted them to be bigger. And I've always been able to kind of adapt my brows into the whatever shape I wanted. I always had this love for the 1980s supermodel eyebrow that were quite structured but very dense in color. Just think about like Brooke Shields or Cindy Crawford. They all had well-groomed brows that were more deep, which were kind of seen of a resurgence of now. I felt like it wasn't looking as flattering. So I started going with more softer colors. Then as I've gotten older, I've noticed my brows started feeling like they were becoming a little bit more sparse, which is a very normal part of aging. Our eyebrows can start to feel a little more sparse than they were in our teens and twenties. Then I got my 
eyebrows microbladed and that was really interesting and I really enjoyed it but it doesn't last and the person I got to do my eyebrows is one of my really good friends in Virginia. Most of you know I live in Toronto, Canada so if we're getting from Toronto to Virginia that's something I do often to see my family but it wasn't something I was wanting to keep up with for my eyebrows and as my eyebrows have began to fade out I have enjoyed using pencils and gels again to fill them in but I find the way I do them is a lot more simplified than I used to. I feel like a lot of things as far as the makeup application over the years some things have become more complex other things have become more simplified and I really enjoy that the way I do things has changed so much over the years. Everything I do is in a new way to find out the ways that make me feel happiest within my makeup routine because makeup should be something that makes you happy brings up and boosts your level of confidence and just makes you feel good makes you pull your shoulder back hold your head straight stand with nice posture and smile and take on the world with a positive outlook that's a little bit more than what makeup can do but in my mind it just kind of helps me put my best foot forward for the day now that eyebrows are on we are going to move on to complexion and new product number one that i'm so excited for elf halo glow liquid filter glow booster for radiant skin i have featured this product on my channel before but it's a different color the one i had in my collection is the elf halo glow in shade one fair here is shade one fair compared to my skin tone it's a little deep and a little peachy orange a while back elf had done the shade expansion but i've not seen these new shades in canada yet so the new shade i purchased while i was at target is shade 0.5 fair and this is supposed to have a cool undertone shade one fair 0.5 fair bk beauty 101 contour foundation brush i like adding glow to my skin but i find for me in the spring months some days it can be really cold some days it can be a little bit warmer and i'm generally outside a lot more and my skin can get a little bit more oily so my skin being more prone to getting oily i don't want to apply too much product i don't want to apply it all over my face is the last thing i want to do is create a really beautiful makeup look that looks greasy and shiny preemptively so i like to focus on targeted areas of my face like the upper cheekbone maybe a little bit onto the outer portions of the forehead or the temples and maybe certain points like the ball of the chin or the tip of the nose but not all over it's just it's not my kind of style one and two it will make my skin potentially look a little bit more oily being someone that has more oily to combination skin i do have larger pores especially in the center portions of my face so if i apply a product that's really light reflective all over my face i can make those pores look bigger and i don't know about you i don't want my pore size to be a focal point of my makeup looks i tend to like to do things to make them look a little bit smoother so my overall texture looks more cohesive and a little bit more pleasant to my eye when i look at it in the mirror now using whatever's left over on my brush i'm gonna take it on the ball of the chin and if you want to highlight the ball of the chin or the ball of the nose any of the high points of your face but you feel like when you try to apply it you go too heavy take your brush flick downwards what you're going to do is you're going to take these rounder features of the face and you were going to hit the high point of them and this is going to be similar to where when you're outside the sun's coming down it's hitting the high points illuminating certain points of the face that's going to be the top of the chin top of the lip and top of the nose and normally right here on the top of the brow so now you can highlight and illuminate the face without making it look greasy shiny all over and you're going to have that glow that comes through your base makeup now shortly before i left for my my trip I placed an order with Shoppers Drug Mart and got a few new products because I'm running very very low on my favorite number one to Chanel foundation and I saw in a video Angie from Hot and Flashy talked about the Revlon Illuminance Skin Caring Foundation. This has 5% squalene and hyaluronic acid. She said this was very similar to the number one to Chanel and when I heard that I was very curious to try this because I believe here in Canada this is around $20 and the number one to Chanel foundation is $9. $97. So if I could find something more affordable so I don't use the Chanel foundation as much and save myself a little bit of money, I'm going to try it. Finding a shade match was a little difficult because I was shopping online. The shade I purchased is 109 Light Ivory. So let's hope the shade works for my skin. So on the back of my hand, this looks like a decent shade match for my overall body skin, but my facial skin is a little bit deeper because I do have rosacea and that redness can 
can make my overall tone look a little bit deeper if I try too hard to make my face match my body, as you can see here on the back of my hand. My face is about a shade and a half deeper than my overall body skin. It can make my face look too pale and it can emphasize texture. I try to find a midpoint when choosing a foundation shade because I want the undertone and the overall effect of my face to be slightly lighter and brighter to blend with my body. But if I go too light, it can look a little uncanny. Okay, so first impression, the Revlon Illuminance Foundation is blending out beautifully. It has a nice glow. It's looking really beautiful over top of the skin prep we did. Wow. Looking at it in the mirror behind my camera, we're looking like this. this is a really good shade match. That's impressive. And I didn't even use that whole pump. So I think this is going to be very similar as far as the mileage comparison between this and my number one to Chanel because my number one to Chanel, I can normally make one pump spread out across most of my face and get a nice kind of sheer layer that I like for every day. Now, this is just a first impression. I would like to do a proper wear test and review on this foundation going into the future. Wow, if this stays looking like this on my skin all day, this might become my new everyday foundation. It is giving me that very skincare like glow to my skin that I really love about the Chanel foundation. I'm gonna use the other side of my little mirror because this side is a magnifying mirror. Magnified my skin. You can see like right here in my forehead and some of the deeper pores. You can see a little bit of makeup in a standard mirror. My skin looks perfect, but even this magnified mirror, like I'm gonna come in really close. I don't know if you can see anything. But unless I'm looking in the part of the mirror that's magnified, I cannot see the foundation sitting on my skin. That's impressive. Wow. I'm very curious to see how this wears because right now this looks really good. I'm, I'm really impressed. For a drugstore foundation, $20 is steep. I mean, we're getting close to like those MAC or Wear Beauty prices, but this is really, really beautiful. I want to see what will happen when I build this up because as you build something up, not only will the coverage look different, but the shade can look different because you're making it a little bit more opaque. So I like a little bit more coverage on the fronts of my cheek because that's where my rosacea normally likes to come out. Same with my nose. My upper lip can be prone to just looking a little ruddy as well and the outer corners of my forehead. This time, instead of just dotting onto one quadrant of the face, I am going to blend all over and I'm going to use the mirror behind my camera. So that way, you can see what it looks like as I blend so that way there's no mirror blocking. This is so beautiful. Wow. I'm genuinely very impressed and I'm also impressed by my shade matching. As this foundation dries down, meshes in the skin, we might encounter a dry down which is where the shade becomes slightly deeper and as it continues to sit on the skin it might oxidize and that's when it will get a little bit deeper. So normally you would have two different points of the shade deepening or going a little bit more orangey and that's your dry down and oxidation. So that's something to be mindful. That's why generally when we're saying when you're matching your foundation, if you do one stripe on the side of your face, let it sit there for a minute. That way you can just make sure you're going to get the best shade that matches you for the bulk of the day. Got a little bit more right here. I almost forgot to blend out. Wow. I'm, I'm very, very happy with this. Here on my upper lip, this is where, you know, I get irritation and stubble from shaving. This part of my face can be very, very irritated more often than not. And foundation can sit a little odd on there. It can be a little bit more apparent. Same with the nose. A lot of us will have enlarged pores because the nose is part of the face that produces a lot of oil. Sometimes foundation can look a little odd there. And also the nose is the very central point to the face. A lot of people will look at your nose because it's right between your eyes. So foundation can look a little heavier there than it will like say on your cheeks. This looks really beautiful. Wow, I am I'm I'm impressed. On um, first impressions, I do feel like this looks a little bit more luminous on my skin than the Chanel foundation does, but 
Also keep in mind, I did use the e.l.f. Halo Gloss that's here on the top of the cheek and where I have my lights for recording, they are casting lighting on the face. Down here looks pretty normal. I didn't apply any type of illuminators here. It looks more just like a moisturized skin finish, which I love. I'm very impressed by that Revlon foundation. My neckline's a little bit lower. You're gonna see more of my chest skin. And then when I bring my hands up to my face in conversation, I don't wanna look like my face and my hands belong to two separate bodies. So even though I really like the shade for unifying my face, neck, and chest, compared to my hands, it feels a little deep. So I am going to brighten it up a little bit. House Labs Triclone Skin Foundation, the shade 015 Fair Warm. The shades run more like MAC foundation shades. So cool is warm and warm is cool. So if you normally wear a cool tone foundation and House Labs, you're gonna be a warm shade. So this shade is a really beautiful match for my body skin, but if I apply it all over my face, it can just look a little off and a little stark. So I apply this just to the top of the cheekbones where I like to highlight a little bit and it will help to brighten up the face and just bring more of a cohesive look without making my face look ghostly. I'm really happy with how this looks. Something I've been doing since my vacation, I have been taking a synthetic powder brush. This is a beautiful powder brush I've had for years. The Wet n Wild powder brush. I believe this was like $2 at Walgreens when I purchased it. Buff right over my liquid products to help to spread and thin things out. And you can also carry it down onto the neck a little bit just so things look a little bit more cohesive. Very happy with this. This looks really good. We are gonna do a little bit of concealer and I'm using the NARS Radiant Creamy Concealer in the shade Vanilla. And this is just a favorite of mine. My little tube of the NARS Radiant Creamy Concealer is almost empty and it's starting to dry a little bit quicker. Instead of going to the other side and dotting it on like I normally would, I am just going to blend out my under eyes right now and then I'll go forward to the other areas. Some people like to use a really brightening shade of concealer under their eyes. For me, under my eyes, you can see my tear trough area where the tendon runs right under the eyes and it can make my eyes look like they're a little bit more hollow. So what I like to do is I like to use a concealer shade that matches the rest of my face. That way it softens the appearance of the higher point here, the fatty part of my cheek and the more hollow portion here. So using a shade that matches, we'll just do that. And then here under my eye where the eye rounds forward, it's gonna look a little bit more flush. So it just kind of makes things look a little bit more plump. This is a trick I used to mention a lot on my channel and something I still use. It doesn't matter if you get Botox or what around your eye area, you are still going to see some little fine lines. And that's just from the way our face moves. It's part of the way the skin looks. And if you want it to look smoother, which is something Botox can't really do down here, you would have to fill it. And that's just not something Something I'm a huge fan of. So what I like to do is I use my brush and look at the direction that the eyes go. For me, they kind of go in a horizontal and then they go a little bit more down diagonally here. So I just gently whisk over and that way I can smooth any of this liquid concealer into those Line of, because if I go up and down and blend against it, it's gonna settle and look, make things look a little bit more heavy. So I just like to blend it out a little bit more. And there you go, it just helps smooth out the appearance of the eyes. I also like using my concealer to prep my eyes, but I want my eyes to feel a little bit more pink, brighten up the face to go along with the spring look. So I've been using a little bit of my concealer and this About Face Matte Fluid Eye Paint, the shade On Point. So what I've been doing is I will rotate the fluid eye paint and you can see it's a really beautiful blossom pink color. It's a little bit more of a neutral pink, that slightly more yellowy undertone is going to help brighten up my eyes and I'm putting a little bit of the concealer on the back of my hand. I'm gonna use my concealer brush and I'm going to blend the concealer and the paint together. And it's going to help me create my own custom eye base. I'm gonna get the coverage of the concealer that matches my skin and I'm going to get that brightening pink shade for a little bit of brightening for the eyes.
looking at the eyelids, I'm just gonna use the mirror behind the camera again so you can kind of see what the eyelid looks when it's stretched. I always like to kind of stretch the eyelids, so tilt my chin, look down, and that will help me smooth any potential creasing. A little bit of pink helps to make the eyes look a little bit brighter compared to the lower eye. And now I have a dry beauty sponge. I'm just going to press over and smooth everything down. So that way, when I go to powder, it's gonna be less likely for things to kind of gum up. With this being more of a spring transitional makeup, I really want to play with some of those more brighter, warm spring tones. But my skin is on the cool tone side and I can look a little off in some purely warm tone shade. So I want to add a little bit of a cool toned backdrop to brighten up my overall complexion and make everything take on a slightly cooler shift. I'm going to use another product I purchased while I was in the States. This is from the brand Persona. Dream Stick Blush Multi-Stick for cheek and lip and this is in the shade Bubble. And Bubble is a very vivid blue based pink. I like to work off the back of my hand. I don't think it would break up my makeup but I don't want to take a risk. And also I don't know how this is going to blend because I haven't got to use it yet. So I'm going to use my foundation brush and start working this onto my cheeks. That is really pretty. This is very reminiscent of the previous formula of the Dior Backstage Rosy Glow Blush in shade 001 Pink. When I was at Ulta, I was looking at the Dior blushes and I thought about purchasing the new one because I loved the original one so much and I miss talking about it. But the new shade is just not comparable to the previous one. The new one's a lot more chalky. It's a lot more pastel and it's almost like when I swatch it on my hand, it looks like a gray lavender versus this really beautiful blue-based pink. So if you liked that shade of the Dior Rosy Glow Blush and you don't want to buy the new one or maybe you want a cream version, this Persona Blush Stick in the shade Bubble is really beautiful and it's blending out really, really nicely. You could easily build this up and applying it now here with my foundation brush over top of my unset liquid and cream products. It's applying really, really nicely. I'm just gonna put a little bit here on the central portions of my face just to bring some of the natural ruddiness back to my skin. And you'll see that's gonna help my face tie up my neck and chest a little bit easier, even though I do not blush a vibrant blue pink shade. It's just gonna make my face feel a little bit more natural. This is looking really, really beautiful. Beautiful. I would love to just walk around my skin with this really beautiful glow, but since I get oily, it would move around too much for me. So I am gonna have to powder this down, but we're gonna enjoy it for just a moment together. I'm gonna take my beauty sponge again, and I'm going to press over my under eyes just to make sure nothing is creasing. Same with my upper eyelid, and I'm really using the point. These little sponges I've been using for a bit now, they are really good. These are the AOA Studios Pop sponge. I got them off Amazon US. If I'm not mistaken, they were less than $10 for a bag of six and they are really good. Nice soft sponges. I am noticing my foundation is settling right here in the crease of my nose. That's not unheard of. Most foundations crease in my nose between my skincare, my skin type, and how deep the groove is right here of my nose. Things settle. And I noticed more so now because I was getting filler placed into my smile lines. And last time I went in for my Botox and filler, I had my filler dissolved through the nasal labial or smile lines, as well as my top lip. I had my top lip re filled, but I didn't have my smile lines refilled. Even though now you can see them, they look a little bit more recessed. The whole area feels a little bit more youthful and I'm much happier with it now. Things do settle in the outer corner of my nose a little bit more. So it's just something I have to work to blend a little bit more now. Now I'm going to powder my face and the powder I'm using is a mix. I had a bunch of loose powders that were all about half empty and I liked this one for this reason. I liked that one for that reason. I just mixed them all together and I love it so, so much. So this powder has the Givenchy Prise and Leave and Mousseline Pastel, It Cosmetics Bye Bye Pore Powder. There's a little bit of the Charlotte Tilbury Magic Genius Powder, the NYX Halo Glow Powder. There's just a mix of a lot of different things in this powder and you do not need to mix 
these exact powders together. But if you've got powders in your collection that you love and you're kind of getting to the point, because a lot of these like shakeout containers, when they start getting low, it can be hard to get all the product out. If you have like an empty Tupperware dish or just a little dish that you can mix things into, like here, I will show you. I've been saving this giant container that came with the original La Prairie cellular powder and I have mixed all of my loose powders in here. So finish buffing it into my face and then I can continue with my powder story. I love this. From that big La Prairie powder container, I took one of the powders I mixed, which was the Honest Beauty Invisible Blurring Loose Powder. I poured some in here, so this one lives in my vanity. And then I purchased these little mesh powder compacts off Amazon, I believe. You got two of them in a pack. They look like this and it has a little puff you can put inside. And this I keep in my bag so I can touch up my powder throughout the day because as the temperature gets hot, I am gonna get sweaty and I'm gonna get oily. And I like to be able to powder down and take away the shine I don't want throughout the day. I'm just gonna smooth right under my eyes once more. Same with my eyelids. My eyes are gonna be pretty neutral. So I'm not quite sure how I want to do my eyes or my cheeks. So I think I'm gonna start with my cheek makeup first because I feel like that might have a little bit more impact than I'm anticipating. Now the highlight I wanna use is a little bit more intense. So I'm gonna start with my highlighter. This is the Rare Beauty Powder Highlight. I have the shade Enlightened, which I believe the website was calling a cool champagne. If anything, I feel like this is more neutral. I feel like it pulls a little too warm to be considered a cool tone and a little bit goes a long way. You need such a small amount because it goes on quite strong, but I'm just using my powder brush to smooth it out. And it's really beautiful, but you really need to be in the mood for an intense highlighter. And then sometimes using your finger to smooth over can just help soften things down a little bit more. This reminds me of the type of highlighter that was really popular when I was working at Sephora. So like 2014 to 2016, think of like the Becca Shimmering Skin Perfector or the Makeup Forever highlighters or even MAC Extra Dimension or the Laura Geller Baked Gelato and Gilded Honey. Those were the big highlighters and that was like when people were talking about beaming from outer space. Even though once it blends out, I can smooth it out. Applied full on, not really blended, it can emphasize skin texture. So I'm gonna use my powder. This will have residual loose powder in it, but I want to smooth it out because I don't really wanna go out with my pores looking bigger than they already are and then use my finger, soften over a little bit more. I love this Rare Beauty highlight, but this is definitely like a mood for me. It just gives me, hi, we are here. Things are bright and happy and I'm just so happy to see you. <laughs> <laughs> but that's how that feels on my cheek. And it's definitely something I like to apply first because it can feel a little stark. Now I'm gonna add a little bit of bronzer to warm things up. And I'm gonna be using the L'Oreal Infallible 24 Hour Fresh Wear Bronzer. The shade I have is number 200 Fair. And I'm gonna use that same Wet n Wild powder brush. Now this bronzer is a really beautiful apricot pink bronzer shade and I like to just start by working onto the palm of my hand. It is going to warm up my skin a little too much for my personal taste and it can start looking a little too apricot. I've got that pinky blush, the Persona Bubble on, which is going to help cool things down a little bit and take things in a slightly more rosy direction. But I want to make sure I'm using a small amount of product because I don't want to look orange or apricot colored bracket on the upper half of my face. So keep it nice and soft. If you want to, you can always layer it up. And this is my channel. You know I'm about to apply some powder blush. So I'm just gonna let this really beautiful bronzer give my skin a bit of warmth and just be a nice supporting background player because this will also help tie into the eyeshadow palette that I'm going to use. Moving straight into blush, I need a good expanding shade. And this is something I talk about loving all the time. The expanding shade is going to bridge your highlighter and your blush. So this is something that's really popular in East Asian beauty. So Chinese beauty, Korean beauty, Japanese beauty. And this is something that's normally applied right here in this inner triangular portion. It's going to 
firm up the area, make it look a little bit lighter and brighter. It's helped to tie into your cheek color. So think of this as a matte shade that bridges your skin tone and your blush. The one I'm using is from Etude, and this is the Lovely Cookie Blusher in Lavender Lemon Macaron. I'm just gonna start right here in this inner portion of my face, and it's almost, think about creating a little triangle from the flare of the nostril to the outer corner of my eye. This is going to overlap the Rare Beauty highlight, but that's okay. It's gonna still be there giving us glow. And if you're someone like me who also has a little bit more of an under eye hollow, this can further help to soften that look and just make everything look a little bit more flush, a little bit more like flat and plump. Now I wanna apply my blusher shade, the color that is gonna really liven up my cheeks. And I'm so excited to use one of my favorite blushers of all time. This is the Hourglass Ambient Lighting Blush in the shade Sublime Flush. A beautiful coral pink with lavender purple veining in it. This blush is a little bit more intense. So I always like to work and work it into the palm of my hand. And then I can go through and just glaze over the cheeks. One of my favorite things to do when I'm thinking about how to choose my blush and when I want to create a spring look. Spring, in my mind, is synonymous with flowers blooming, with lush gardens. Think about your favorite flower and all the different colors that those flowers bloom in and use those colors to create your color story. You can do it just for your blush, if you want to layer your blushers, you can do it for your blush and cheeks, even tie into your eyes. But like I'm doing today, I'm gonna go slightly more neutral on my eyes and I am going to let the spring colors take over my cheeks and lips. Well, we'll see about lips, I might go more neutral. Just depends on what I'm feeling when we get there. So, so. Next, I am going to use a highlighting blush and this is going to tie in the cheek color and the highlight. And this is another blush from Hourglass, except this is part of the Ambient Strobe Lighting Blush. The Ambient Lighting Blushes are in, combined and mixed with the ambient light setting powders. The ambient strobe lighting blushes are blended with the strobe light highlighting powders. And this shade is one of my all time favorites. This is Incandescent Electra. So I'm gonna take this shade right here on the front of the cheek. Nice, large blending motion. So beautiful. For Christmas, I gifted this shade to one of my friends. She has been in love with the shade Mood Exposure for years. She is one of my friends who struggles with rosacea and a lot of blushes just feel really overwhelming and just kind of make her rosacea look a little bit more intense than she wants it to be. For Christmas, I gifted her this blusher and she said this might have taken over her love for mood exposure because this shade gives her cheeks a glow, but it also helps to calm down the rosacea. And it makes sense. She, if I had to put her in a seasonal color palette, I would say she's probably a light spring. And this shade, you have that nice soft golden champagne highlight mixed with this beautiful vibrant coral. So this would be, if you're looking at seasonal color, I would say this is stunning, beautiful, perfect for a bright spring or a light spring. So beautiful and so much beautiful glow. Eyes are gonna be very, very simple and I am so excited I can use this palette on camera. This is from the brand Roman and this is one of my favorite Korean beauty brands. The Better Than Palette in shade number 10, My Cheery Garden. Here we have My Melody, which is one of my favorite Sanrio character collections. And this is from the Whatever Girls collection. When I first purchased this, it was only available on Olive Young. And when I'm recording this, the collection is now months later available on Yes Style. So here is the really beautiful neutral leaning pink color story. I'm so excited to finally use this on camera. And I'm gonna show you how I use this to put together one of my favorite everyday looks. And most days when I'm using this, it's one brush and my fingers. So we're starting off with the refer number 16 and I'm going to use this light bone shade, which is called Milky Bud. With this shade, I like to start here on the inner corner of my eye, right over. This is almost acting like a highlighting shade, focusing on brightening and then using the rest to prime and brighten my eyelid for color. 
lot of times when I'm working with these more soft pastel tones, I really like to brighten up the base. That way they can show up, because even though I have more of a fair skin tone, adding a light base that is lighter than my overall skin tone is going to make the eyeshadows just pop and feel a little bit more lively. Next, I'm gonna use this peach shade called Cheery Fairy. And same brush, this time using the point, I'm gonna run this through my socket line, nice and high, angling the brush up towards the brow bone. That way it kind of blows the color up and out and it just gives the eyes an illusion of feeling a little bit bigger and brighter. And I'm just going to connect here in this exaggerated C shape to the outer corner of my eye. That way my eyes have definition, but they stay lifted. Again, back and forth, windshield wiper motion, side to side and using this exaggerated C-shaped motion right here. So, so pretty. Now I wanna use this shimmery pink shade called Peach Bubble, and I'm picking this up on the belly of my brush. I want to look down and just wash this right over the mobile eyelid. And then I'm gonna go back and forth. Better yet, this is more of like an elliptical motion, so a soft circular motion, and it's gonna help tie the shade into the socket line. I'm gonna use my finger just to soften over and blend the two shades together. Now, there's some days where I like an eyeliner. There's some days I don't like an eyeliner. Today, I kind of feel like I want an eyeliner, but I'm not sure if I want to use this shade or the shade next to it. So this shade is called Ruddy Shade, and this shade is Choco Ground. I think I am just going to use a little bit of both, and this is a Jane Iredell angled brush, and I'm just going to apply that on the outer half of my eyes. And then I like to flip my brush over use that point and just use whatever's left on my brush to create a little uptick and blend back over. And then just with my eyes open, I'm gonna go through, play with the shape. And you're using a powder and even though these two shades are deeper, they have a really beautiful translucency to them to where if things aren't perfect, it's okay. You can build them up, you can take your time to fix the shape. All I'm doing is just creating a little bit of shape to lift my eyes up. I want my eyes to kind of look just bigger and brighter. And once you have your mascara on, this little line that we're creating is gonna pretty much disappear. It's just gonna make the outer corner of your eyes look a little bit denser and a little bit more full. Now for lashes, I am so excited. Recently I was at Shoppers Drug Mart and they were doing a point redemption event. I was looking for an item to get me up to a specific total so I could do a redemption. They had the benefit, their real tinted primer. I used to love this so much and I loved using this as a standalone mascara because it was a brown tinted primer and the brush is this really beautiful fine tooth plastic comb. My issue is it's not waterproof, it's not water resistant, it can move and smudge. I couldn't use this as a standalone mascara but now that I have found some really good mascaras that stay and don't smudge I wanted to use this as a lash primer because I love maximizing my eyelashes. I have very thin, fine lashes. So anything I can do to give me the look of having more eyelash than I do, I am all for. This has this little ball on the end of the wand. So you can kind of go in and just paint individual lashes that you if you want to that is so good so here's my left eye with the benefit their real tinted primer and my right eye with nothing so so good mascara i'm using is the tower 28 make waves mascara in the shade drift which is a dark brown this is beautiful it doesn't smudge or flake and it gives really nice definition and length to the lash That's really, really nice. Hold on, I'm just gonna use my little angled brush to go through and wipe over like little mascara blobs. That combination of the Benefit Their Real Lash Primer and the Tower 28 Mascara is so pretty. So left eye with lash primer and mascara, right eye, nothing on my lashes yet. So good, I'm gonna finish off this side. I'll be right back. For lips, I think I'm gonna go something slightly softer. So I'm gonna start off with this Sephora Collection Rouge Gel Lip Liner. And this is the shade number 22, Midday Rose. 
day. This is an interesting shade. I remember I ordered this online when there was a sale on Sephora collection products and there was something about the shade I just didn't love and I kind of put it in my lip liner drawer and didn't think about it anymore. So I'm hoping today we will find a combination where this lip pencil can have its time to shine because the Rouge Gel lip pencils from Sephora are so, so good. And actually, I really like this color right now. I think the first time I didn't enjoy it because it was just on my bare lip shade. I, ha I haven't wiped any foundation on my lips, so that's allowing my lip color to be slightly softer so the lip liner can shine. I'm gonna use a Day Seek Water Stain. This is the shade number 10, Berry Shoe. And this shade, I feel like, was the highlight of the makeup I had with me when I was in Virginia over the Christmas holiday because it stays on well and the color is just beautiful. Day Seek is just becoming a lot more widely available and that makes me so happy. I noticed late last year, Day Seek now has an official Amazon storefront in the US and here in Canada, Omomo is starting to carry Day Seek along with Roman in their stores, which makes me so happy. And just look at this color. It is so good. If you were someone who is into seasonal color analysis and you are a light summer, this shade is a must. Or if you're anyone who likes those kind of light, bright, pastel pink tones that don't feel too washed out and sickly, this is really, really beautiful. I am going to top it off with the gloss and I'm going to use the Roman Glasting Water Gloss. And this is the shade 00 Meteor Trap. This is just a really beautiful clear. Has a little bit of a minty taste, but it has a really beautiful blue and purple glitter to it and it dries down and it doesn't move around. Really, really beautiful. Let's do a final look through and see. Oh, looks like I got a little bit of mascara smudge right down here. Easy clean up. Other side looks good. I think the look is good, although I feel like now the blush doesn't have as much potency since we got the lips on. So I'm just gonna add a teeny tiny bit of blush. And sadly, I feel like this blusher might have been discontinued. This is from Guerlain 06 Pink Me Up. Really, really beautiful pink. I'm gonna use the Ruffer 05 again. Well, nice bit of pigment. So we are just gonna apply a little bit. There we go. Just a little bit more pink to the ball of the cheek. You know, I've never seen these Guerlain blushes in store and I saw it online last year, I believe it was, like late last year, mid or late last year on the Shoppers Drug Mart website. That is so pretty. Okay, I'm gonna use my powder brush just to soften down. Now I think we are fully ready for spring. And I like how the slightly warmer pink tones really play with the blue of my jumper. I love that so, so much. And you know, it wouldn't be one of my videos if we didn't talk about fragrance. And moving from winter into spring, I want those light, bright florals. Like I, I love a good floral scent. It just makes me happy. It makes me feel alive. It's like having a fresh bouquet in your kitchen when you go downstairs first thing in the morning. It's just bright and lively and just makes everything feel so happy. For body cream, I used the Bath & Body Works Satin Slippers Ultimate Hydrate body cream. This came out back in late Christmas season and this was kind of like their ballet core winter collection or New Year's collection. This has fragrance notes of white rose, dreamy jasmine, and airy musk. The fragrance notes are very similar to that of the traditional rose which I have. I think it's in my guest washroom right now. It's really beautiful. This does smell similar to rose so if you can't find this at your local store then definitely go for rose which was just repacked and it's so, so cute. But it's a really beautiful, fresh floral with a little bit of a musky undertone. So beautiful. And the musk and rose in this plays so well with my base layer scent. And just like my makeup collection, I love I love all things beauty related. So fragrance is part of that journey. Fragrance for me bridges my makeup routine with my outfit I'm wearing. So I like to layer my fragrances and maximize it. And for a transitional fragrance moving from winter to spring, I like a floral, a little bit of something to it. So something of weather to ground it. Narciso Rodriguez for her Mousse Noir Rose. And I've already got a little bit on, but we'll add a little bit more. 
powdery, musky base that you find in all the Narcisa Rodriguez for her fragrances. The rose, it adds something that is slightly vintage that almost feels like a vintage powder you would find on your grandmother's dressing table, but it almost adds like a modern twist to vintage glamour. It's so, so beautiful. It layers like a dream with a lot of your bright rose or floral fragrances that you would use more spring, summer. So since we're not officially in spring, because I'm recording this beginning of March and the first day of spring here is March 19th. I want to share with you a new fragrance I added in my collection that was an instant love for me. This is from Guerlain's Aqua Allegoria range and this is Flora Bloom Forte. So this is the Eau de Parfum version. Here we have this really beautiful classic Guerlain beehive bottle shape and the juice inside is this really beautiful pink that feels right on track with my lip color. Flora Bloom is the perfect name. We need to layer a little bit on. This is a fresh bouquet. Of, we've got a mascara smudge. I don't know the official notes, but to my nose, I wouldn't be surprised if you have a classic rose peony scent because this is a bright floral that is slightly aquatic. And the Aqua Allegoria range, they all have this slightly wateriness to them, which makes them feel very bright. They're great scents for moving out of the colder season to the more hot, humid months of the year. It's very light, it's very refreshing. It's like a palette like cleanser, but I do get this sense of rose, maybe some violet. I don't know, there's something in here that reminds me of white lilies that you would often see like in a spring Easter arrangement. There's something a little earthy and as it's drying down on me, I do pick up a little bit of a slight muskiness. I have worn this twice now and both days I get about four hours of wear out of it and it just kind of goes from a nice bright floral to a slightly more soft, musk forward floral. The musk base really comes out around the three, three and a half hour mark on me. And that's when I haven't layered with other things. So today is a first for me layering it with these two, but so far wearing it now, it's just a really beautiful powdery rose scent, which is what I wanted going into today's fragrance wear. So I'm so excited. I cannot wait to see all of your comments. The comments on videos have, they're just leaving me speaking slightly. There's new people coming to the channel and I love interacting with all of you. Your comments are so sweet and I just I just feel truly blessed that I am able to turn on my camera and share with you the things that I love and I love that you all love them too. So thank you so much for taking the time out of your day to spend it here with me and I cannot wait to read your comments and until the next time we see each other, I hope you're taking care of yourself wherever it is you are in the world. Bye, y'all.